has given us everything we need to make it through the circumstance, whatever it is that we are facing. Well, here's a question that we've received through social media. It's from Agnes, and she says, why did God plan all these sufferings for me? When am I going to reach my destiny? Well, Agnes, so many people can relate to your question. And God didn't plan your suffering, but he did say we would all have to face different problems and that he would always be with us. We want you to understand that when you're looking to reach your destiny, you do have what it takes, no matter what it is that you're facing. Take a look at this. You know, to believe that God loves us requires a lot of faith because I had a lot of questions. If God loved me, then why did He let me be born this way? If God can do all miracles and anything that I ask, He can do it, then why doesn't He give me arms and legs when I ask Him to relieve me of my pain? I wanted to know the answer. I actually felt that God, for some reason, wasn't listening. For some reason, didn't answer my prayer um, and I was starting to think that he wasn't real. So for our friend Agnes and everyone else today we'll see how God helped a man with no arms and legs to overcome his emotional suffering and despite his circumstances reach his destiny. Joyce is going to share how you can do the same as she answers the question, do I have what it takes? I've got a little message simply called, You've Got What It Takes. Can you turn to somebody and look at them and say, You've Got What It Takes. <laughs> say, I've Got What It Takes. Okay, now, you know, the fear of inadequacy is probably one of the greatest fears that people have. Let's just say it again. The fear of inadequacy, the fear that we're not enough, the thoughts of I'm not, I can't, I don't, I didn't, I lack, and other similar types of thinking rob us of the truth of who we really are in Christ. We really do need to know the difference in our who and our do because if you're a believer in Christ, you're much more than the mistakes that you make. We have an identity of being in Him and everything that He is and has, we also have. It's ours legally and positionally. It's in us by the new birth and we are in the process of walking it out every day in our lives. It's literally almost like saying we are becoming what we already are. We're becoming what we already are, but we are that while we're becoming that. Amen? So there's so many things that we have that we don't really believe that we have because we wait to see them and God wants us to believe it first and then we'll see it. The fear of inadequacy. God will always give us what we need to be able to do what he asks us to do if we learn how to agree with him. If God says, I've got it, then I've got it. If God says, I am, then I am. It doesn't matter how I feel or what I think. It doesn't even really matter what anybody else says. If God says, I've got it, then I've got it. Everybody say, I've got it. Amen. Now, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. For his divine power has bestowed upon us all things, that are requisite and suited to life and godliness through the full personal knowledge of him who called us by and to his own glory and excellence. You know, the word glory means the manifestation of the very best that God has. I want us to look at this scripture again. For his divine power, by his grace and mercy, not by anything we've done, he has bestowed upon us, he has gifted us all things, somebody say all things, all things, that are requisite and suited to life and godliness. That means God has given us everything that I need to live the very best life that I can possibly live, and he did it because he's good, not because I'm good. 
Everybody say, I've got it. John 16, 15. Everything, somebody say everything. Everything, everything that the Father has is mine. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> now you know, I just got to be honest with you and tell you that even as I stand here and read that to you, and I believe it with my heart, my mind is having a hard time with that. And I, I really believe it. But my mind is having a hard time with it. Now here's the thing. If, you, if we really can learn how to live out of our hearts instead of our heads, ooh, that was good. If we really learn to live out of our hearts instead of our heads, wow, what a life we can have. In my heart, I believe. I really do believe that I have everything that I need to live a victorious life. I don't always feel like it, I don't always act like it, but I, I, I believe it, I got it. I believe I've got what it takes. I really do believe that I can do whatever I need to do through Christ who is my strength. I don't always think it, <laughs> but I believe it. Put one hand on your belly and one hand right up here on your head. Now how many of you know there's a big difference in those two places? <laughs> And so, if you live out of this, you ever, does anybody ever say to you, well, you know, just off the top of my head. Well, that's the last place I want any information from, <laughs> is off the top of your head or the top of my head. Give me something that's deep in your spirit. Give me some truth, not just what you think. Everything the Father has is mine. <laughs> that is what I meant when I said that he, the Spirit, will take the things that are mine and will reveal, declare, disclose, and transmit them unto you. Now, Jesus is saying, look, everything the Father has is mine and I'm giving it to you. Everybody say, I got it. But now, if we really pay attention to this Amplified Translation, he says, the Holy Spirit is revealing them to you. He's disclosing them to you, and I love this, he is transmitting them to you. Now in order to, for anybody to accurately and successfully transmit, you gotta have a receiver on the other end. So I'll tell you what, I'm learning to be a great receiver. Don't try to give me anything if you don't want me to take it because I'm good at receiving. <laughs> you know, sometimes you try to bless people like, oh, no, 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 you don't have to do that. You ain't going to get that out of me. <laughs> I'm going to be like, whoa, thank you. <laughs> Amen? I'm transmitting life-changing messages over television, but if you don't have a receiver in your house, you can't get it. And see, a lot of us are still trying to get something that we don't have to get. We need to stop and realize that Jesus already got it, and now we've got it because he gave it to us, and all we need to do is say, I'm receiving, and how do I receive? Through my believing. Actually, the word believe, if you study it, means to receive, and the word receive means to believe. So if I'm a believer, then I'm a receiver. And if I'm a receiver, then I'm a believer. Be it unto you even as you believe. You know, I think a lot of people are waiting on God to change the circumstance, to really be truly content in the Lord Jesus. But if you're not truly content in what Jesus has already done for you, you do not know what he's really done for you. Um, and that has set me free. And that has given me a platform to believe in miracles, but at the same time, not have to wait for miracles to happen before my joy in Jesus is true and full. Growing up in church, you know, every Sunday, singing that song, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. You know, to believe that God loves us requires a lot of faith. 
because I had a lot of questions. If God loved me, then why did he let me be born this way? If God can do all miracles and anything that I ask, he can do it, then why doesn't he give me arms and legs when I ask him to relieve me of my pain? I wanted to know the answer. I actually felt that God, for some reason, wasn't listening. For some reason, didn't answer my prayer. Um, and I was starting to think that he wasn't real. What was so, um, I guess, really difficult to get through were the years between ages eight and 12. I was actually the first uh, special needs child to be integrated into a mainstream school. Um, being the only one with no arms and no legs, of course, and in a wheelchair, I had a lot of unwanted attention, um, feeling depressed, feeling alone. And at age 10, I actually tried to commit suicide by drowning myself in six inches of water in my family bathtub. After a whole day of being bullied and teased, I just didn't want to live anymore. By the grace of God, on the third time I rolled over in my family bathtub, I saw my mum and my dad crying at my grave. I saw that pain that I would leave behind and I decided to stay. But I went through depression because no one could heal my heart. No money, no amount of friends, no amount of education or things that I quote unquote needed to get through my daily life. It just couldn't heal my heart. Finally at age 15, God answered my prayer. It was when I read John chapter 9. A man was born blind, born with a disability that no one could actually explain. And that sort of sounded familiar to me. People asked Jesus, why was this man born blind? And Jesus said it was done so that the works of God would be revealed through him. And faith came over me. Hearing of the word produces faith. It is a gift. It is not a focus that you can muster up inside. It is a gift given from God when you hear the promises through His Word. And that changed my life. He healed my heart. And now I can be an instrument in His hand to let people know, as a miracle, seeing His strength perfected in my weakness that would have otherwise been not as powerful, it's more powerful seeing a man without arms and legs smiling than someone who got their miracle. What about for the people who didn't get their miracle? And for anyone who's watching right now who thinks that God doesn't have a purpose and what can God ever do with me? Well, look what God did with me. If God can use a man without arms and legs to be his hands and feet, there is not one person watching this program where God can't use their broken pieces too. Now I want to quote Romans 8, 28, where it says, All things come together for the good for those who love Him. You know, I thought that the greatest burden in my life was my circumstance. It is not. The greatest burden in your life is not your circumstance. The greatest burden in your life is you not being able to see your life clearly through God's eyes knowing that He knows that He's going to be with you and He's going to pull you through, that all things come together for the good. Even the worst part of your life up to this point, God is so big, so mighty, so gracious that He can turn it into some good. If I was born without arms and legs and God did not give me arms and legs miraculously for one soul, bring it on.
You know, Nick is quite an amazing man, and God has done some incredible things in his life. And we have more from Joyce coming up also to help you with this question. But first, we have some answers from you, our friends on social media. We asked you to share what you do when emotions become overwhelming. Catherine from New Zealand says, For me, listening to worship and praise songs has helped me when I feel emotionally overwhelmed. And that's a great one. That works for so many of us. Belveta in California Well, when my emotions are overwhelming, I begin to speak scriptures to my thoughts. It's exactly what scripture says to do. Great answer. And Nellie from Indiana says, when things are heavy, I stand up and walk through my house, thanking God for delivering me from depression, thanking him for setting me free from whatever it is that is trying to get me back into that pit. I end up praying for people and I declare good things out loud. It gives me hope and I know that God hears me and loves me. Great answers, great encouragement. Thank you for sharing. Go to our Facebook page for more great encouragement for you and your life, whatever it is that you're dealing with. And we want you to tell us more. Tell us today how God has answered prayers that you have prayed for other people. It's such an encouragement. When we lift other people up in prayer and we see God working, then we know he works in our life also. So check that out on Facebook at the Joyce Meyer Ministries Facebook page. You do have what it takes, no matter what you're feeling like today, no matter what you're going through. And today's offer may help you grasp that even more. This is a teaching from Joyce called More Than Conquerors. And this is right from God's word, just helping you understand that you do have everything you need in your life through what Christ did for you, through the Holy Spirit in your life. This is one hour single CD and it's absolutely free, which is amazing. How can you go wrong? You can get it as a digital download or you can get the the CD just like this. And uh, like we said, it's free, so check it out. Right now, here's the conclusion to today's question. Do I have what it takes? The fear of being inadequate is just another way of saying that we're afraid of failure. I'm afraid I'm not enough. I'm afraid I don't have what it takes. So I'd rather just not even try than to try and fail. Proverbs 24, 16 says, The righteous man falls seven times and gets up again. Somebody say, I get up again. But the person who truly knows who they are in Christ, I mean, you really know who you are in Christ. It's not based on how you feel. You know, sometimes I get up here and I feel really anointed. I mean, I feel like I'm just really in the flow. And sometimes I get up here and I just feel like, what? And man, I I had to get over that. I have to know that I'm anointed. I have to know that I'm called of God. I have to know who I am in Christ. And it's not this head knowing, it's a heart knowing. Be it unto you even as you believe. Jesus wants us to pray and believe. The power of believing. And look at me, let me tell you something. You can believe what you want to believe. (laughs) You're going to believe something. It might as well be something that's going to help you. It's just as simple. Actually, it's easier to believe you can than to believe you can't. It's easier to believe you are than to believe you aren't. In God's economy, now listen to this, in God's economy, faith always leads. Feelings follow. Manifestations follow. But faith always takes the lead. Faith always steps out into what it's not really sure of. Faith doesn't stay safe in the boat. Faith takes a risk. Faith takes a chance because faith is determined to be all it can be. What is the work that God requires of us? It says in John 6, 29, this is the work that God requires of you, that you believe (laughs) in the one whom he has sent. I love that. I used to have this message going on in my head all the time. What do you want me to do, God? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? (laughs) 
I just thought surely my circumstances would get better if I could just find the right thing to do. <laughs> Is anybody there? And then there'd be a little demon sitting on my shoulder, screaming in my ear, what are you going to do? 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 <laughs> then my friends would come along, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> you know, we don't live out of a do, we live out of a done. <laughs> come on. He said, it is done. It's not about what I need to do. Now, yes, I do things, but I don't do them to get God to love me. I do them because he already loves me. God loves me. He loves you. He loves you on your pretty days, and he loves you on your not-so-pretty days. You can have a bad hair day, and God still loves you. Woo-hoo-hoo. 406 references in the Bible to the words believe, believing, and believed. God must have been pretty serious about this believing thing. And when we believe God, we enter his rest. Oh, my gosh. How much do people need to enter the rest of God? I don't care what you think. I don't care what you say. Someday I'm hoping to write my whole life story. And I just would love to be able to talk in detail about my whole journey with God. And let me tell you something. It is a journey. And it's a journey that everybody can walk. God doesn't have these few little favorites that he picks out and does special things for. He does different things through different ones of us. And no one thing is greater than another thing. You're doing the greatest thing if you're just doing what God is asking you to do in your little corner of the world. Amen. I wrote down in my notes, pray to be led by the Holy Spirit and then have a confident attitude that you can be led by the Spirit. And my, my grammar check thing on my computer kept kicking it out as an error. And I'm thinking, there's nothing misspelled. What is wrong with it? What's wrong with it? And then I saw it. Even the computer sometimes is smarter than we are. I wrote down, pray to be led by the Holy Spirit and then have a confident attitude that I didn't say this, but that someday you can be. See, you're not getting it either. You know what's wrong with it? If I pray to be, then I need to believe that I am. <laughs> if I pray to the God who can do everything that I will be, then I don't go pray that I can. I say that I am. God, help me change. Then all I need to say after that is every day I'm changing into his image from glory to glory. I don't hope it's going to happen someday. Now faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Now. Faith is always now. It's not yesterday, tomorrow, or it's, it's now. You are anointed. You do hear from God. You are led by the Holy Spirit. You do have peace. You do have joy. You are gifted and talented. You are creative. You do have a future. Your past doesn't matter. Everybody say, I believe it. It's just that simple. If you will begin to believe, hang reason. Let it go do whatever it's got to do. But if you'll begin to believe, to live from faith to faith to faith to faith. In Jesus' name, I declare over you that you have not even begun to see what God will do in your life. You do have a hero in you. You are heroes. You will do great things. 
You are a world changer. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. God is for you. He is not against you. And if God be for me, whom shall I fear? So get this today, it's so important. Stop focusing on your limitations and believe that you can do all things through Christ, anything he's asking you to do, simply because he's given you the ability to do what he asks. He's there for you, he's with you, he never leaves you alone. There's so much more for you on this topic in Joyce's teaching, More Than Conquerors, and we want you to have this so bad, we're offering this to you free today. It's a single CD, which means it's an hour on CD, or you can choose to get it as a digital download. And all you need to do is contact us and say you'd like to have it. It's that simple. It'll be right on its way to you. And the reason that we do this is because God's word is so powerful that we want to get all the scripture that's packed into this teaching into your hands so that you can listen to it over and over. Let it get into your spirit. Let it become part of who you are so that you can realize you do have exactly what it takes. Be here next time on Everyday Answers. And I am going to motivate you to do something with the word that you know. Get yourself off your mind. Start loving other people radically and aggressively because that's the only way that you can ever be permanently happy. Of course, we want your questions. We want your comments. We love to hear from you. So use hashtag EA on Twitter. Anything that you're talking about with Everyday Answers, we'd love to hear it. If you have a question, hashtag Ask Joyce. You can do that on Facebook, on 